Today on Business Success in Six with Stacy, I have Lori Riegler here from Off Leash Milwaukee in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Lori, thanks for jumping on the call with me today. Thank you. Hi, Stacy. It is nice to meet you. If you don't mind, I would love to learn more about Off Leash and share it with our clients and community. So if we want to, we'll go ahead and ask six questions. Please do. All right, here we go. When people ask you what Off Leash Milwaukee does, how do you describe your business? We are an adventure club for dogs. We pick them up and we take them on different adventures throughout the city with um, another small group of friends. That is so fun. An adventure adventure group. I've never even heard of that, but that sounds absolutely wonderful, especially for our canine friends. So absolutely. How long have you been in business? What were your plans when you started your business and how has your business changed? Tell me. Um, in 2016, I was walking dogs at the Wisconsin Humane Society, and I thought that I wanted to open a pet sitting company that was really focused on taking care of pets that had medical needs and that were older and senior. And I still do a lot of that, but it kind of evolved into something else, which okay. is the Adventure Club for Dogs. Um, we had a group of resident physicians at the medical college, and they all got puppies during the residency and they needed a lot of extra time and care so we started picking up their dogs together um, while they were at work or doing their rounds and taking them out on adventures and that is where the adventure club was born so so fun so you've been in business now seven years it sounds like you've grown a lot how many people do you have on your team right now there's 10 of us on the team Wow, that's so great. So what is the biggest way that you impact the community? Uh, let's see. I would say it would have to be with our events. Mm -hmm. uh, we connect with other local businesses and pet parents to put on dog events throughout the city. We do a great Halloween party and they're always full of dogs, pet parents, and we raise money for our local rescues, which is one of my favorite ways to give back that is so wonderful thank you for doing that and you know it's so it's so neat when you think about statistics and that animals can help calm the central nervous system I mean there's so many benefits if you're ready for it to have that canine friend with you so thank you for doing that and taking care of them and as well as the the other organizations what is one challenge that you have faced that other business owners could learn from I would say it was when we got into a very heavy growth phase mm -hmm. and it was hard to um, keep up with demand. We couldn't find qualified hires um, and we lost a lot of business. And what I learned is that I should have been more, I should have had my standard operating procedures up to date. Mm -hmm. And if I think I would have, if I would have had a little more internal organization that I probably could have taken it on. However, that being said, um, we were starting something from new, from scratch. Mm -hmm. This, this mm -hmm. was an idea and a concept that we didn't really know how it was going to play out and roll out. Um, finding people that are qualified to manage and be, be responsible for a group of dogs safely is a mm -hmm. big responsibility though. So. We wanted to make sure that we were hiring people that were qualified and properly trained. Absolutely. Another side question. So I mean, a lot of people got animals during the early stages of COVID. Everybody was talking about these COVID puppies. Was that part of the growing pains that you that you had experienced or was it prior to that? When was that? Yeah, absolutely. That was definitely okay. a strain. You nailed it. <laughs> and I was just curious. Um, and, yeah, and a lot of people now too are still kind of struggling with socialization for their dogs. Their dogs spend a lot of time inside with them and only them during the pandemic. So they haven't met other people or dogs or as many people or dogs as they would have liked. So we now, one of the things that's a big benefit our, of our service is helping to socialize these dogs that have been under socialized. And we do it very slowly. Um, very thoughtfully thought out yeah. <laughs> very thoughtfully um yeah well because I can imagine 
you know, if if an animal wasn't, I, I don't want to say properly because with COVID and everything, it's just so such a different time. But if they aren't introduced at the right age frequently enough, it could be unsafe. Isn't that the case? Like, it can be because they would develop fear or anxiety, mm -hmm. and that could push them over their threshold, which could cause them to like act out. So a lot of times fear could potentially lead to that. So you want to make sure um, you go at the dog's pace and don't push them and go nice and slow. Lots of positive reinforcement and treats. Um, maybe meeting one dog at a time. Some dogs are dog selective as well. Um, they might like little white curly haired dogs, but they're maybe afraid of a beagle. Um, so we take, yeah, it's, it, it has to do with like, what and who they were exposed to during that very critical socialization time when they're puppies. Wow, very interesting. So tell me, you've grown a lot since 2016. What does the future look like for you in Off Leash Milwaukee? And do you have an exit plan? Um, I do not have an exit plan. Um, I'm going to stick with this for quite a while. Um, we're going to be expanding our cat sitting services, Brew City Kitties. Oh. Um, yeah, I do a lot of work with cats and I volunteer for Urban Cat Coalition and do TNR. And it's something that's very close to my heart. And the dog thing just kind of took off and that was pushed to the back burner. But I'm finally in a place where I can put in the time to build that and grow it. So I'm very excited about that. And we are also launching a retail store, very small for our clients that will provide the gear that we use every day, the long leads that we use, the first aid packs, the treats that we are fond of, um, and offering those to our clients. Very exciting. So where's this retail location going to be? Do you know yet? Oh, it's just online. Online. Okay, perfect. Yeah, we'll do, we'll do events throughout the city as well. We're going to be participating in Doggy Day at the Deer District on April 8th. So we'll set up a booth and we like being able to talk to people, get out in the community. Um, and we thought we might as well start offering the stuff that we use and all our dog walks as well. Oh my gosh, so exciting. And Brew City Kitties sounds like so much fun too. I'm very excited for you. My final question oh. is all subjects open. What inspires you most? Right now I'm really inspired um, with creating content. Mm -hmm. um, I'm really into writing blog posts. Blogging is really inspiring me right now. Absolutely. Well, very, very yeah. neat. If somebody wants to read these blogs or get in touch with you, use your services, what is the best way for them to connect with you, Lori? I would say go to our website, offleashmke.com. Um, okay. Our blog is there and there's also a new client form that you can fill out and we will get in touch with you to schedule a complimentary phone consultation and um, a meet and greet following that. That is so fun. And do you have any social media people can follow you on as well? Also at Off Leash Milwaukee is our Instagram and Facebook as well. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Good luck with all of these fun mm -hmm. things, Brew City Kitties and the online retail store. Wishing you the best of luck for 2023, Lori. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. Thank you.